Welcome to the Nevcast, where three bros talk business, art, justice, and the pursuit of Jesus. Any day above ground is a good day. Get ready to laugh, cry, and kiss 30 minutes goodbye with Peter Nevland, Dave Nevland, and Rashi. Hey, welcome to the Nevcast. Hey. Here we are, the Nevcast, doing oh, a little bit of uh, technology. It's exciting. Uh, but we've got uh, Johnny a, Molson yes. on the air. With an with, ex- oh, yes. Exciting you know, new day. You may not know Johnny Molson, but you should because uh, he's a marketing consultant. He's also an actor and he's also a radio host. Um, there's a, a lot of talent across the screen from us. Johnny, welcome to the Nevcast. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me, guys. Cool. You're still a radio uh, host? Talk, uh, radio no, show? no. I uh, I hung up those headphones uh, a few years back, but uh, but did it for for a good uh, twenty twenty five years, probably. Wow. Wow. Okay. I did not yeah. know that. I mean, yeah. I knew you worked for a radio station, but I didn't know that you were a host. Like you had a show. Yeah, I did a couple of different things. I had a had a morning show for a while. Uh, I did a talk show on a talk station for a number of wow. years. Uh, yeah. That 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 is a, that seems like that's a, a nerve wracking. You have to keep talking and have an opinion and say something clearly, you know, uh, not like what I'm doing right now. You know, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, that was I originally was on uh, music radio. And so, yeah, you talk for a minute or two minutes and then you play another song and, and you go on. And then suddenly when you switch over to talk radio and you've got a good, you know, 17 to 20 minutes looking, staring you down. Uh, it's amazing how quickly you run out of words. Right. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Wow. Dead air. There's yeah. constantly dead air. That's But that's only if you're not good. Right. Well, cool. Well, I, I didn't know that, but it's cool to hear that about you. Uh, and aren't you also still doing the, uh, you're doing like videos for uh, your Wizard of Ads partnership? You're still recording those and putting those out regularly? Yeah, it's been a while since I've uh, done one of those as well, but uh, but uh, I do you know, regularly record uh, a combination podcast vlog uh, for just, some, just cool. some quick marketing tips and thoughts. Yeah. Well, hey, we've just got a caller coming in. It's oh. Rashid. Hey, how y'all doing, man? Doing all right, Rashi. Can you hear Johnny? Well, Hello, Rashid. Wait, wait, say it again. Johnny, be good. This is nice. That's right. It's Johnny, Johnny Molson, can Johnny say something? Say something. Let's see if Rashi can hear you. Rashi, it's good to meet you. How are you, sir? Hey, I'm doing good. If I had your hands, I cut mine off. There you go. See. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. Yeah, you should ask what what Rashi. Explain to explain to my hands. white brother that what that means. <laughs> I'm just metaphorically speaking in metaphors, basically saying you got the good hand, man. That's all it means, basically. You got the good hand, man. So if I had two hands, I'd put mine off. There you go. Take See, it. you're always in you're always in good hands with Johnny Molson. <laughs> hey, oh, fantastic, fantastic. We were just talking to Johnny uh, about he's he was a radio host for 20, 25 years, and uh, and then he also was an actor, and he's also got his uh, business as a Wizard of Ads partner. That's how I know Johnny because I work with him on a number of accounts, yeah. and he's a fantastic writer. And, yeah. um, you know, and he's, he's artistic, creative, and he's also got a brilliant mind, brilliant strategist, constantly coming up with really great ideas for clients. And so I thought he'd be great to have on the Nevcast because he kind of straddles those worlds of business and art. Yeah. And, uh, and even probably a little bit of faith, you know, mixed in. Well, there we go. Yeah, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. It's good to hear successful people, man. To talk to successful people, man, it give you, it give you motivation, man. Absolutely, you motivation. that's right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Rashi, you, you, occasionally we, it sounds like we're hearing like your CB in the background. Is that true, Rashi? You're in a truck right now, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm in a truck, man. Yeah. Where, where are you off to right now? Ah, uh, man, I'm getting ready to go to uh, Port Arthur, Texas. I pulled off, I mean, the woodlands, and then I'm taking the, uh, a drop, hooking up a uh, load in the woodlands, and I'm taking it to Port Arthur, Texas. Nice. I should have asked, uh, what's your 20, Rashi? <laughs> oh, my 20 is Pasadena. <laughs> Pasadena, Pasadena, Texas Pasadena, right now. Pasadena, Texas. All right, you know. Just picking up a load in the woods and dropping it at the coast. 
There you go. <laughs> I usually drop a load in the woods. Wow. Yeah. yeah. We've made this joke before. Have, have we? Yeah, I heard oh. it. Yeah, wow. It that's, a, thankfully, a, I have a very short memory. It was on a recent episode. <laughs> Anyway, so so let's go let's go back to Johnny. So Johnny, uh, how how is it that first of all you even got into radio in the first place? And I'm guessing you were probably already doing some sort of artistic stuff, you know, at that time. Anyway, can you tell us that story? You know, growing up, yeah, I, I just I was always fascinated by radio. I always thought it was just it was so cool that you could tell stories and uh, with just words and sound effects, and and the audience would would ha- has to be a willing participant in the uh, in the adventure. You know, it's not all laid out there for you. The audience has to do a little bit of work too. Um, yeah. So with sounds and words, uh, that's all. The, those are the two tools that we have in our toolbox in radio. Um, you can you can paint an amazing picture going all the way back to you know War of the Worlds and all the the great radio shows that, that used to exist. So I, I I was always really fascinated by radio and and I believed that if I took theater and acting classes, that would help me in a radio career. Oh. Uh, and, and ultimately it did. Uh, it's not the usual path that people take when they go into broadcasting, but that was, that was kind of my direction was I, so I started really, um, you know, anytime there was an acting class or a theater class or any kind of performance thing, I would, I would kind of gravitate to that, um, thinking that would help me in my, in my radio career. And ultimately I think it did cause it, I, I came to it looking at it through a different lens. So, so you were excited about radio and the acting part, the the theater aspect came out of wanting to be better for radio, right? That's kind yeah, of interesting. Exactly right. Yeah. So, so then when you started doing theater and acting, it's interesting that the radio has sort of gone away, but you're still kind of doing theater and acting. Yeah, uh, and and what I think it, where it has helped me so much and un, unintentionally, but but I'm I'm grateful for it is yeah you know you just like when you read a great book and you and you learn new sentence structures and ways to tell stories. Same thing with theater. You know you can take a a director's approach to storytelling um, that uh, can be used in can be used in advertising, can be used in in just writing not, uh, writing fiction. I mean there's there's all kinds of um, applications for it. At least I've found. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Hey, we're brothers. Dave. Yeah. <laughs> like we're starting a new recording. Uh, it wasn't, yeah. Yeah, anyways. Yeah, right. Guess that was of, a good sound check. It was a mid, it was a mid podcast sound, sound check. Yeah, we give each other the clap. Jeez. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, there are no five year olds watching this <laughs> podcast, so that's good. And the rest are Christians. So I think, you know, that was a good reference. <laughs> we can always, we can always. Oh, that clap! Yeah, yeah, yeah we, right. let's, we edit it out. Anyway, probably not. So, uh, so you're doing radio and theater, right? I'm guessing those two things kind of happen simultaneously. You got interested in, in doing plays, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some different roles that you've played with theater over the years? You know, I've done. Uh, I've done comedy roles. I, you know, I played Chico Marx in a show. I've, I've done Felix Unger uh, in, in The Odd Couple, um, uh, but also some some dramatic roles that I've really uh, really enjoyed too. Some just some really cool. I've got a, real lucky to connect with a couple directors who you know were able to find some just solid. Pulitzer Prize winning plays, uh, and it's just such an yeah. interesting challenge too to uh, go down both avenues from comedy to you know the the way the way I started in radio was writing just silly silly commercials and silly little skits that they would play on a on a morning show. So I just you know I'd write these things out with different characters and voices and things. Um, and it was from doing that that a, a general manager of a radio sta- station said, "Well, you're you're good at writing silly commercials. Can you write an actual real commercial?" Uh, and, right. uh, and but I said, "Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll give it a whirl. Let's see what happens." Um, and so that's kind of how that. So that was the, it was the theater to to doing silly things on a morning show to writing commercials was uh, was really the path that took me there. Um, and then you know did a really good did a really good job of writing creative commercials and you know it was when i i met our our partner roy williams um that i realized how to make those creative commercials actually work for businesses Uh right interesting 
But you were already working at the radio station before you started uh, uh, writing the commercials. Yeah, I was. I was actually an intern. Uh, I was. I was oh, just okay. there on my own time, goofing around. I was still in high school. Um, yeah. Wow. But but fell in love with it pretty quickly. Yeah, and and how long was it after you met Roy that he offered? He said, "Hey, you should become a Wizard of Ads partner." You know, there was probably a, a good 10, 15 years gap there, but I had been doing work with other partners and always had kind of been in the in the orbit of, uh, of Wizard of Ads. Um, and, um, you know, it was it was more of a realization on my part that I probably had done all I could do at a local radio station, um, you know, and there, there really kind of hit a ceiling and it was time to uh-huh. time to do more. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, Roy says that uh, writing ads is the second most pro- uh, sorry, writing ads is the second most profitable form of writing known to man. The first being ransom notes. Um, <laughs> so, were you just making s- just tons of money at the radio station writing ads before you met Roy and and became a Wizard of Ads partner? Uh, no, I was not making tons of money at the radio station by any stretch of the imagination. But I was writing a lot of ads. <laughs> Uh, You're writing you know, a lot was, of ads, yeah, right. It was kind of yeah. like working in a in a mash hospital. I mean, it was just uh, yeah. salespeople would come in with notes and, uh, and you yeah. have to triage these things together real quickly and real uh, quick. You know, it's not uh, wasn't pretty, but uh, but that's you know, that's how you learn. That's that it's that it's that ten thousand hour rule thing. Uh, well, how was that transition going from? Uh, writing just tons and tons of radio ads to becoming a Wizard of Ads partner, and then the way that you write f- now for your the, your clients that you have. Well, the thing that I really enjoyed doing at the radio station that I that is really my passion now is trying to build a strategy, not just not just a pack of commercials that happen to be good, but how are we going to tell this business's story over time? Um, because that's, right. that's how you, that's how you build a successful, uh, uh marketing plan. It's got to have a strategy that that's got a long-term story behind it. Um, because it's, it's not a, it's not a one and done thing. And, you know, after, um, I met Roy in 1998 when his first book came out. And so it was, it was at that time that I started doing more strategic work with clients of the radio station. Um, and over the years that just became less and less wanted, I think by both management and salespeople. And, um, so it wasn't really, I wasn't, I wasn't having fun. Uh, and, Interesting. Uh, so they just, they were like, we don't, we don't want a story. We don't want a strategy. We, we just want an ad. Just give us a creative ad. That's easier to sell, you know, and that's that's the phenomenon that happens, I think, in a lot mm. of media, uh, radio, TV, even on the Internet of uh, how quickly can we get this sort of templated thing in front of people that more or less does the job, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really move the meter. Um, and, and, you know, that and that's happening across the board. And, um, you know, sure. that's what I appreciate so much about what we do um, when we're working with our clients is we're not uh, we're not going to just parachute in with a quick solution, uh, but we're going to say, how, how are we going to build your business so this thing lives and thrives, uh, not just this year and next year, but seven years, 12 years down the road? Yeah, a real a real strategy, a long-term strategy versus short-term thinking, short-term. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, and... And so talk to this, too, because I know you've done you've done a significant amount of research into the difference between a long term strategy and a short term ads that just get people to respond yeah. right away. Why is it, you know, tell us in, in your words, why is it that story is so important to not only uh, growing a business, but doing something that's more long term? Stories are how we learn things. Uh, you know, the Bible is a series of stories. It's a series of parables. It's how, you know, and 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 uh, obviously very very good ones because <laughs> it's it's a, it's a book that has uh, endured uh, for millennia. Um, and as are you know the classics, and so it's it's how people teach other people through stories that, that it's, it's how we're hardwired to do that from back when we were clumping around in uh, in caves. Um, and didn't have paper and, and computers to write on. We just shared stories, and um, when you when you tell a story, um, you 
you cause people to remember things. And when you cause people to remember things, they have a, a feeling about you. And if they have a good feeling about you, they're, they're likely to do business with you, probably more likely to do business with you than, uh, than your competitor, who they don't know. Uh, we don't yeah. like strangers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my my wife uh, teaches birth education, and uh, she's been. Um, I think she's about to. Well, she just recorded it, and next at the end of the month, she's going to do a presentation on how to. So she's trying to get birthing couples to remember different ways that they can uh, cope with and alleviate and just make the best of labor and delivery. And there's different techniques that have been, you know, come up with over the years. Well, she could tell them all the different techniques, but what she's finding and what she did her presentation on is that she, how to weave in the story of history, the story of history and how some of those techniques came about in order to cement the possibilities of what these people could do while they're in the moment of having a baby in their mind, right? And, and so it sticks yeah. in their mind and helps them remember it better. And it's more interesting than, uh, and helps them paying attention to, you know, the education than if she just rattled off the different techniques and the facts. Absolutely, Dave. I mean, I, you know, I can, I can sit here and show you charts and tell you all the proper fiduciary data of a prospectus and, and why you should invest your money. Or I can tell you yes. about the ant, or I can tell you about the ants and the grasshopper. <laughs> oh, wait, that's <laughs> and, much and, better. And right. you can, and, and, and it's, it's much more graspable if, if that's a word. Um, you know, and people go, Oh, okay. I get it now. Uh, as opposed yeah. to, well, here's all the logical reasons why, but here, you know, here's a, here's a story and it's, it's how we process things. And you see where you fit into it. You kind of see where you fit yeah. into the scheme of things. And it, you know, it, it, I mean, dovetail, dovetails with into your own storyline, basically. Well, it's, right. and, and it's interesting to me, there's, this is something that I guess I've been thinking about. We sort of talked about this a little while ago, but in something that's not being said about story, and I don't think our culture does a good job of addressing this side of it, but what happens in stories is our feelings get engaged. Yeah. Uh, our emotions, emotions get engaged. And actually there's a lot of science that shows this, that the uh, binder that causes synaptic connections to be strong in our brains is adrenaline. And guess what gets released more when you have a larger emotion uh, get evoked, more adrenaline. And so you remember something longer, the more adrenaline, uh, the more emotion that's attract, uh, attached to it. And stories do this wonderful job of that. Um, you know, when when you're writing them and when you're when you're crafting a long term story, it's like not only are you saying, oh, that's funny. This particular moment is funny, but the people who are presenting this, the people who are involved in it, we start to bond with those characters. And then you want they become almost like your your friends. You're, they're your little imaginary friends, you know, and and our culture doesn't really like to admit that our feelings are so important and that friendships and relationships are so important. But they are. And it's what grows businesses. It's what grows relationships. It what's, it's what makes life worth living, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we say a lot of times, uh, win the heart and the mind will follow. Right. Right. Oh, and uh, the mind will uh, find all kinds of reasons to justify what the heart has decided. And the reason we're saying that is because in Western culture, we've tended to really elevate uh, facts and data and analysis above uh, personal effect or personal mm -hmm. uh, attachment to something. Now, both of them are important. Facts do matter. Uh, someone, we could we could get we could go too far and be like and start saying your truth, my truth. You know, there's no objective truth. It's just whatever whatever you feel about something is what's true. But we can also go the other way too far and be like, okay, well, all we need is the analysis and the facts, and we're going to make our decision on that. No, we, we're going to remember and bond with something a lot better when we find ways to engage the emotions. Like you're saying, it yeah. is a brain architecture thing. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to, uh, uh, justify it with a data driven kind of, uh, uh, analysis of it, right? But you don't have to. 
it is you just, just a little bit more obvious that we bond with people, with ideas, when there's a story that has engaged our emotions. When we feel something, we want to bond with it. We want to, yes, I want to support that. I want to go with that. I want to get involved with that, right? Rashi, um, I know you're muted, but if you unmute yourself, you don't need to push anything, Dave. Um, if you unmute yourself, uh, when you've had in your previous, you, well, guy is still current, but in your janitorial business, and then also in your truck driving business, what has been, how has it worked as far as just going in and saying, I can do this for you, or uh, making a connection with someone, making an emotional bond with something? How does, how has that changed for you in, in your business experience? Oh, you talking about dealing with you, 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 what's your question? Oh, you talking about having building rapport with the customers? Yeah, building rapport with the customer. How how important have you found that that is building rapport with the customers and you know, maybe even caring for your customers as opposed to just going in and doing your job and just dealing with the facts? I, I think you when you when you build a rapport and treat the customers like as friends. They keep you long if, if you're doing a good job. It's just not about treating them as friends, but actually, you know, still sticking the business and make making sure that you do a good job. But, you know, like I got customers sometimes that want me to do stuff like go clean some carpets. Uh, I got three rooms I want you to go clean, but I might have them for 10 plus years. And, you know, what's what's going to be the charge on it? I'd be like, you know, this is on the house, man. So but don't worry about don't worry about paying me nothing, you know. So stuff like that, they go a long ways. I I think it's important. Yeah, you know, I think it's important. And then it's sometimes when I done did that, I had customers come back and I, I done, you know, let them slide for like, you know, three rooms probably going to cost me $75 a piece to go do. I mean, the chemical's not going to be that much, $10, $20 to get the chemical. And then I have them come back like a couple weeks later, or a month later, and give me a job for 22 $2,300 stripping some floors and stuff. So I think that's real important. I think that's real important. Now I heard Roy speak on that. I think Roy said one time that you don't make friends in business. But uh, I think that that's true to a certain extent. Because it's like some some, th some people you can deal with, it don't matter how, how, how good you do by them or how good you try to be their friends. But if you mess up and do one thing bad, you, you don't know how to chew bubble gum after you mess up and do something wrong so you know but but i think yeah it's real it's real important in business to be you know to be friends with your customers then to, and call them and just check on them like i got a customer now i just call him and check on him man like hey how you doing i'm just letting you know i'm checking on you and seeing if you're all right is anything you want me to do and that go a long way with people you know some people it, it don't mean nothing to them but you if you can reach reach a lot if you can reach some of them they is good for business in the long run man because they're gonna keep you they're gonna keep you because they like the dude really care about me he ain't just out trying to just squeeze a dollar out of me you know what i'm saying yeah absolutely absolutely i, I bet rashid does that more in uh innately almost probably uh without thinking about it uh than a lot of people do Oh, well, yeah, because you you kind of are, Rushy, you are a natural at connecting with people for sure. Yeah. Um, and I think it helps, it helps, obviously it helps to be friendly, you know, it helps not to, not to be completely focused on yourself. And, uh, you know, Rushy, you do a fantastic job of that. Um, right, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's how you got to be like. That's how you gotta be like when you're dealing with people, because you don't want to always try to squeeze the quarter to the evil star screaming, man. It ain't about that. It, it ain't. It, it's not about that, man. Yeah. You know, it, it's about people when you like. I mean, I heard Jesus say, man, and I followed some stuff that Jesus said, man. Like Jesus said, if you really want to get a person to follow you, man, you become a servant to him, man. Like you do for him. Yeah. You know, just like, uh, I, I think it was a story where he washed a woman's feet. I don't know, I'm not trying to get rid of The disciples' feet. Right now. Trying to wash the disciples' that, feet, yeah. That, that was a good, you know, that was a good, you know, it was something good that he put out there. And if you use that, man, if you can do for a person and, and be a servant to a person, man, they'll follow you. Not all of them, but I think like 90% of people, if you be a servant to them, man, they'll, you know, they'll they'll follow you and they'll, and they'll stay down with you. Certain people, you're not going to reach everybody. Yeah. That's just life. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. Johnny, I think 
Yeah, that, that's awesome, Rashi. Johnny, um, what you're talking about story and the power of story to allow the public to connect to a business. Can you tell us, like, what have you seen have been the difference between the ads that you were writing for clients in the radio station and then your feeling towards the clients where you're able to develop a story for them and this is this becomes a much more long-term relationship can you tell us about the that effect on you uh the effect on me um you know it's uh it's i i enjoy it a heck of a lot more uh because i because i know then to to rashid's point i feel like i'm serving my clients when i'm when i'm helping them tell their story um i mean i've got a client who um you know, he, he started telling me his story and I asked him why his business was named what it was. And he, he named it after his grandmother. Hmm. And, um, and I said, well, tell, tell me about that. You know, why, why did you name it after your grandmother? He said, well, you know, I grew up in a, uh, in Columbia and my parents, you know, were busy. Dad, mom were, were kind of absent. My grandmother really raised me and I'm, I'm who I am because of that. And I just wanted, you know, every day when I walk into work, I wanted to, have that reminder and look at that sign and say, yeah, I'm yeah. doing it because of what she taught me. Oh my gosh. I mean, uh, yeah, who he, doesn't he, love practically that? Wrote, he practically <laughs> wrote his own commercial, you know? Uh, right. and, yeah. um, so, you know, so I crafted the story around that. And so he comes back and he's tears in his eyes and I don't know how you did that. And I said, well, I just, I just told you what you told me. I just told you your story back to you. Um, and, and I think it's a, a compelling enough story that it will resonate because who doesn't, who doesn't like a guy who loves his grandmother? I mean, my gosh. Right, 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 right. Yeah, it's amazing. It, it, it's amazing that it's that simple. And so, I, I, and so, and, and yeah, and, and, and then, so you talk about that story connection. So not only is that meaningful to the business owner, but it's meaningful to the customer too, because now they, when everything else is a tie, when the product is the same, the price is similar, the, you know, all these other things are, you know, kind of blurry and fuzzy and kind of, kind of similar, something stands out. And, and that thing that stands out is, well, this is a guy who has deep values going back you know, to what his grandmother taught him when he was a little guy growing up in Columbia. Um, yeah. and, and that's, and, and there's your tiebreaker when everything else is equal. Yeah. Well, and I would probably say that even if, uh, it's not totally equal, even if there's some, you know, uh, a small, it, it can, it can make up a gap. It can make yeah. up the gap. It can go beyond just being, uh, the thing that breaks a tie. Uh, you can go, you, you, yeah. It's strong. I bet it's probably stronger than uh, some of the data if the data doesn't equal, you know, to a point. Well, I th well, okay. So think about. I just want to let's let's think about it from like a little bit of an analysis type of thing, right? From our the way that we're made, we have as big of a need for emotional connection as we do for food, air, and water. Like that's as important to us as food, air, and water. Most of the time, yeah, we're doing relatively good on provi being provided with food, air, water, clothing, the things that we need. What oftentimes is lacking is the, is the biggest deficit in our lives is emotional connection, is emotional attachment, is relationship. And so when you on your inside are crying out for relationship, I mean, if that wasn't the case in America, we would not have a problem with addictions the way that we do. Yeah. And there's addiction is rampant in America, whether it's you know, drugs, uh, you know, painkillers, or if it's actually things like TV or, food. or you know, uh, our behavior, sexual addictions, right? Food addictions, all these kinds of things. And I think it has this huge part to do with the fact that we're not getting enough emotional connection. And so when people are at a deficit for that and a business comes along, and even though they're selling something that is not a huge, amazing product that you need every day, it's just you know, heating and air conditioning or it's plumbing or it's roofing or, or fences yeah. or who knows, you, you know, yeah, those things. It's not like you go, oh, that man, it means something to me. You know, you're out on the street, <laughs> dude, have you seen that fence right over there? Holy <laughs> cow, that is one amazing fence. Let's talk about some new fencing techniques, right. you know, but somebody all of a sudden provides an emotional, you, you get an emotional connection with someone who is providing fences and stuff. And suddenly you go, oh, that's my person. I don't even care about anybody else because they're providing something that I need. And it's an unconscious thing. 
we, we won't admit that we need those things in our culture, but yeah. you know, I think, I think this, so it more than, more than makes up the deficit to your point, yeah. Dave, just proving that. Yeah. Well, and you're giving examples of things that uh, we don't need every day. Right. right. These these things are uh, you don't you don't you need them every once in a while. You need to buy a fence every once in a while. And uh, what makes the difference between someone you feel good about is that you're going to think of that person first when finally your fence falls down. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, well, and, and then it, and that makes a difference for you, I'm sure, in writing the ads and in working for people, people who are willing to share their story yeah, creates a bond, creates a bond for you <laughs> as well. And you're like, I no. like these guys, and you do great work for them. Yeah, and 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 don't you know who cares about the fence? It's not the fence; it's what the fence does. It's it's a it's a there way that my kids can right. play in the yard with the dog, and I don't have to worry. And uh, you know, there's safety. There's all there's all these other things. Uh, these these human needs that are there. I don't need a fence, but I need safety. Uh, and that's right. and when you can speak to that, then, yeah. then I think you've got a good uh, you've got a good story to tell. No one buys a drill. They buy it. Yeah. the need to build a hole, uh, fill a hole. They need to make a hole. They buy the need to make a hole. That was well said. <laughs> I'm telling they you. Want, they want to hang a picture on the wall. That, that's, that's what they need. <laughs> know. You know? They don't need a drill. They need a hole. Yeah. <laughs> we are clearly extroverts. Let's think this out as we talk. About it. <laughs> <laughs> that's very good. Well, you know, I think that's – and the other thing that you're talking about is that need – is once again, it comes back to it's an emotional, it's an emotional right. connection that you're making, and uh, you know, sudden, suddenly you're not just doing, hey, here's an offer, but you're attaching it to something that's significant to people. You're pretending that the audience out there, what they care about, is actually important to the person who's writing this, and that if you're a business owner, the person who is writing your ads, they're a person too. And they're going to be strongly bonded and strongly motivated by the amount that you're willing to share with them. And so this this thing of actually being open and real with who we are and our emotions and our stories and sharing those has far more implications than I think people realize. How, how did this happen? Where did where did this come from? How, I mean, how did we how are we wired for this intrinsically? Would this have happened because we just sort of but some pieces we kind of evolved into this or were we designed like this? <laughs> so, you know, it kind of <laughs> seems like we would, I'm Johnny. What are your thoughts? <laughs> were we designed for stories and emotion? Yeah, I think we were. I mean, I think that's yeah. that's absolutely true. Um, you know, it just it just it just sticks, and it it's used it it, it activates more of the brain, uh, you know, yeah. than than just logic alone. Johnny, I think I mean this has been amazing. Would you would you have time to stick around? Could we do like a part two with you? Right now, because I want to talk, I want to get into the artistic side. And we've been talking about business. And some of this is the power of emotion in business. But I, I want to talk about how you kind of balance that having this, this business life and business career while also doing something that's incredibly time consuming. So could we come back and talk about that on, on part two? Would that be cool? That would be fantastic. I'd love to do that. All right. So uh, cool. join us next week where we continue with Johnny Molson. You'll see us wearing the same shirts because we're going to record it right now. But uh, we'll see you next week on the Nevcast. That's it for the Nevcast this time. Join us next week when we talk justice, business, and art in pursuit of Jesus. We will see you soon.